Bacula Enterprise Edition to the rescue. Welcome to the Bacula Systems web series. This continuation of our BWeb intro is designed to show you how to add new storage to your Bacula Enterprise installation. If you haven't yet seen part one of the BWeb intro videos, it may make sense to start there. From the main landing page of BWeb, the storage menu gives us a couple of options. The first, Manage Device, allows the user to manually move, load, or unload tapes, or in some cases, disk volumes. The second is the Storage Overview, which shows all the storage devices on a chosen storage daemon. This storage daemon has two disk auto changers configured with two devices each. One device is currently writing data to the volume and archive device listed here. The volume is a file on the file system and it will be found in the path listed under archive device. Now to add our new storage, we'll go to the configuration area of BWeb by clicking configuration, configure Bacula. From here, the add a new storage resource wizard is the easiest way to set up a new virtual auto changer. The first window gives three choices. You can add new storage to an existing storage daemon, configure a new storage daemon and corresponding new storage devices, or just configure the directory resources for a remote storage daemon. For this demo, I'm adding new devices to existing storage. This wizard can configure many types of storage resources, including standard disk auto changers used in non-deduplication disk backup environments, cloud storage devices for writing directly to S3, Azure, and other cloud targets, deduplicating storage devices, as well as single devices for simple configurations. Let's add some storage using the Global Endpoint Deduplication plugin. BWeb can copy the connection information from an existing device before moving on to the actual configuration. First, there is a choice for the number of devices to set up in this virtual auto changer. In the case of Global Endpoint Deduplication, each device will run only one job at a time, so this number should correspond to planned concurrent job usage on the storage daemon. It's also smart to reserve a couple devices for restore in case all the devices are in use when a restore request comes in. The Global Endpoint Deduplication plugin requires a few additional paths for the GED engine components. The text here is a brief overview of what each part does and some key reminders. But please contact support and read the GED documentation for more in-depth tuning advice. Now we must define where on our file system we'll store the backup data. In the shell window here, I've highlighted the new LVM volume, which was added to this storage daemon as a backup target. Under this mount point, I've created directories for the separate deduplication engine components. This helps keep things cleaner, and often each of these is on a different mount point. I can copy and paste these paths into BWeb to set up my GED storage. In a non-deduplicated storage configuration, only the archive path would be required at this step. A unique media type must be chosen for this auto changer so that Bacula knows which volumes can be read in this location. And finally, we'll give our new storage resource a name. And then save everything to a temporary work set. Here are all the configuration resources that will be created mostly on the storage daemon, but also the required storage reference to make the director aware of the new devices. All the configuration files are held temporarily in the Bacula working directory so that they can be reviewed before you commit them. From here, a commit and reload will apply the changes to our live configuration. Note that the storage daemon must be restarted and any jobs running on it will be killed. Now let's take a look at the new auto changer. Here is the overview with all 12 new devices. Clicking on any of the devices shows the path and media type that were set up in the configuration. Finally, a network connection test will verify that data can be read and written by the new auto changer and give some initial performance data. That concludes this introduction to using BWeb to add a deduplicating virtual auto changer to Bacula Enterprise Edition. As always, if you want to try Bacula Enterprise Edition, go to baculasystems.com and click Try for Free. And please contact us if you want more information. Thank you.